Almost a year ago, we drove an Evo 9 MR and an STI swapped Subaru Forester from Florida to Alaska. And now we've decided to take another road trip. This time, it'll be in cars that we bought for $5,000. Ben will be taking his supercharged Miata, and I will be taking my Type R swapped Honda Civic on a journey of 7,000 miles. Down to the southernmost point in the continental US, and all the way up north to Nova Scotia. I'm a Miata owner and I am fabulous! Well, Ben, I can't believe it, but Advance Auto has let us go on another road trip. Another one. Uh, this time we're gonna do a little bit, a uh, little bit more crazy, I suppose. This time uh, we're gonna do five thousand dollar like budget cars, basically. Like, what can you get for like a good car for five thousand dollars? And I have picked a Honda Civic DX. It's got the full Type R swap, um, so it's supposed to look and act like a Type R. I've always wanted a Honda, so I'm very excited to finally have the opportunity to get in one. You would have always wanted a Honda. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I've never really wanted a Miata, uh, but everyone has always told me that I should want one, so I got one. But this Miata is supercharged uh, with a small Jackson Racing uh, twin screw supercharger. Produces approximately eight horsepower as opposed to the factory six. Uh, so I feel like it's good foil yeah, to your car. Absolutely, yeah. I have opted for the hatchback, so okay. hopefully that makes things a little bit more convenient for me. Despite the fact that I have no cruise control, no power windows, no power steering, no AC, uh, no power locks, so I'm, I'm, I'm bare bones here, but it um, should be fun. It's lightweight, fun, Honda. It's very Honda. It's, very, it's Honda. very Honda. This is as Honda as it gets. Exactly, yeah. So hopefully it'll hold up to my you know high school expectations of what a Honda should be. Over the next three weeks, we're taking our $5,000 tuner cars on a 7,000 mile journey up and down the East Coast. So we're gonna go down to Key West, Florida and check out the southernmost point in the continental US. From Florida, we're gonna go up through the mountains, the Blue Ridge Mountains, up into Toronto, where hopefully we'll get to track these cars, and kind of see how they do on the track. And then we're gonna make our way up to Nova Scotia and drive Cabot Trail, um, which is, from what I can tell online, one of the most gorgeous roads that I've ever seen or will see, and I'm very excited for that. Honda Civics and Mazda Miatas are both very popular cars and we've driven them before, but we've never had a chance to really discover what it's like to own these cars. What better way to find out than by taking them on a road trip? So the car that I've picked for this road trip is a Mazda Miata a 1997 NA. So this is the last year of the first generation of the legendary MX-5. Everyone always says that Miatas are always the answer, whether it's to a track day or for just a car to have fun with. But I don't really know if anyone ever says that they're the answer to a road trip car. So what we're going to find out on this trip is whether or not uh, it can still be fun if you're trapped in it for three weeks of straight driving. All right, so this is my 1997 Honda Civic DX uh, that has been converted to be a Civic Type R. It has all of the Type R goodies on it. It has Recaros from the Type R in it, uh, Type R steering wheel, cluster, shift knob, Type R wing, rear lip, side skirts, front bumper, and most importantly, the B16B from the Type R as well as the transmission from the Type R that has an LSD. And yes, this car has VTEC. <laughs> It just revs out to eight and a half thousand RPM. Gah! So in most regards, this is just a standard little Miata. He's got the flip up headlights. It's got a hard top roof, which is very nice. And it's got little hoop bars. Uh, so the, if you didn't have the hard top on, you could take it on track. Uh, 1.8 liter. So all very standard stuff, not that exciting. The interesting thing about this particular car is that the previous owner before me actually fitted it with a supercharger, a Jackson Racing M45 twin screw blower. This car is still by absolutely no means fast. Uh, maybe generates 150 wheel horsepower on the six pounds of boost that I think that it makes. So it's not a fast car, but it is fun and it makes some cool noises and is generally adorable. Now I finally have the opportunity to see what all this Honda buzz is all about. So far, I love this car. 
it's so raw, you know? Like, they don't make cars like this anymore. Like, the new Type R, I've driven the new Type R. It's a fantastic car, but it's like, it's totally different. It doesn't quite have the same soul that this thing has. I haven't gotten a lot of seat time with this car yet, but man, I really enjoy it. The journey is off to a great start, and we've made it down to southern Georgia. We're headed to our first destination of Key West, Florida, to see some teal-colored beaches and enjoy some key lime pie. But after driving for a few hours, we're both starting to realize some of the drawbacks of our cars. Honda Civics are stolen a lot. It's the most stolen car in the US. Last year, 45,000 1997 Honda Civics were stolen. And considering they only made 318,000 Honda Civics, that means 14% of every 1997 Honda Civic was stolen. So I've made some precautions to make sure this car won't get stolen. It's got a front camera and a rear camera, and it's got motion detection. I have another GPS tracker in this car. I will be taking my ECU out of the car every night. Meanwhile, over in my little Miata, I was concerned for a different reason. Uh, a common mod with uh, Miatas for taller people is to do the foamectomy which is essentially cutting out a piece of foam from underneath the outer layer of the driver's seat that's gonna let you drop down uh, a little bit further into the seat so that you're, you have a little bit more headspace, which this car has and, you know, I fit. So right now, for example, um, I'm, I'm not wearing shoes. Uh, this is for legroom purposes, obviously. I'm not some kind of psychopath who just drives around not wearing shoes. Uh, the sole of the shoe is actually going to encroach upon my legroom space and cause my leg to be scrunched entire millimeters closer to my body. I'm not even wearing socks because, of course, again, that's more of a barrier and that's less distance that my leg can stretch out. No matter how badly I wanted to amputate my right leg, the trip was off to a great start. Both Ben Civic and my Miata are fun little cars to drive, but we were also taking a third car on this trip. We needed a support vehicle in case something were to happen to one of our cars, and we needed something to film rollers out of. One thing to note is uh, for this trip, we've got a camera vehicle uh, that we have both Devin and Christopher driving in. Um, so this is going to act as both a vehicle that we can film out of, uh, vehicle that we can carry a bunch of the extra stuff we have in since I don't have a lot of cargo capacity. Also a, a support vehicle should anything happen uh, to either of our cars. Fingers crossed that that is not the case. The Miata clutch has been acting a little funky. Feels like there's air in the clutch line. I'm gonna go ahead and just assume that that's the slave cylinder because they are notorious on Miatas for going out. I would have changed it before the trip. There's a stainless steel clutch line on the car from the previous owner and uh, I just kind of assumed that that uh, slave cylinder had already been changed out. So that's kind of my fault, knowing that it's a common issue, I should have changed it before the, we got on the road, but it's not too bad of a job. Here at Advance, they had one, they have two in stock. Just gonna go pick one up, change it out. If that solves the problem, great. If it doesn't, at least they have a new slave cylinder, so. So changing the slave cylinder on a Miata is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Uh, I know on a lot of other cars it is not so easy to access. So, you know, we're doing it in the parking lot. I've been taking it real slow, just, you know, making sure I do everything properly and uh, we're still almost done. In hindsight, I should have changed the slave cylinder out before we left for the trip, but because the car came from the previous owner with a braided clutch line already installed, I just assumed that the slave cylinder had been changed as well. Not to worry though, the new slave cylinder was only $20 in advance, and it wasn't taking too long to get it swapped out. So, new clutch slave cylinder is in. Uh, clutch feels a lot better. Hopefully that was the issue and that solved the problem. Um, I guess we'll find out. Uh, I really don't want to deal with this anymore. Um, but, you know, things happen. Oh, he's coming out. What's he got? Oil. <laughs> Is that half the cord? After the slave cylinder change, we were back on the road. We only had three more hours to go that day to make it to Miami, Florida. The plan was to spend the night there and wake up bright and early the next morning to make our journey to the Florida Keys. 
At over 80 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature outside was getting warmer, so it was finally time to take the top off the Miata. We have some lovely weather here in Key West today, and uh, it's 82 degrees, which is phenomenal considering it's March. According to a thermometer that I have in this car, it is 105 degrees right now inside this car, which is pretty crazy considering, uh, you know, it's 82 degrees outside, so that's 20 degrees warmer in my car. And uh, I had the wise decision to pick a car that does not have AC equipped. Normally, I would complain about not having AC in this heat, but seeing the Florida Keys is so cool, and I can't think about anything but that teal water. Ben, I think it's pretty inclusive that I have brought the finest automobile in the history of automobiles for the beach. I'm actually really envious of you right now. Good, good. I'm drinking it in. Yeah, you know, it's funny. So far, I haven't actually gotten a good reception from driving a Honda Civic. You mean that the masses don't appreciate your JDM 9000 RPM engine? Yeah, I mean, nobody nobody appreciates 1.6 liters anymore. Size matters, dude. I mean, clearly, that's why you picked the Miata, right? <laughs> You know, like a lot of people say the Miata is like for hairdressers, it's a very feminine car. I don't get that. Where's that coming from? I'm a Miata owner and I am fabulous! The Keys are gorgeous. We had a three hour drive south that day, surrounded by the teal waters of the Atlantic. And with the top down, I was really starting to understand what the Miata lifestyle was all about. But I wasn't the only one enjoying it. <laughs> right there, see, don't play. You like it? Yeah. Nice is it adorable? Nice Thank you. Thank you. Are you Dumplin'? I am Dumplin'. No, this is Dumplin', the car. We've made it into Key West, the southernmost point in the continental United States of America. But we're not just here to sightsee. We're on a mission to get some of the best key lime pie. Have you not actually had key lime pie? I don't think so. Seriously? Wow, okay. That's pretty cool. My, my dad's a big key lime pie guy, so we have key lime pie all the time. Hmm, I love key lime pie. Kermit's supposedly has the best key lime pie available, so it was an obvious destination for our road trip, and we can see that they have a lot more than just key lime pie. They put key lime in things that I didn't know key lime could be in. They have so many different variants of key lime that we're gonna have to keep coming back for more. I'll start with traditional key lime pie, and Ben is having chocolate-covered key lime pie. We'll have key lime slushies and even key lime ice cream. How's that ice cream, you almost done? It's really good. Yep. Like, it's a really strong <laughs> So where are we going next? <laughs> oh, I'm going to get another scoop. <laughs> so next stop on the agenda is Deal's Gap, Tale of the Dragon. We're gonna see what the cars can do on some back roads. Mm. I've never been. I'll tell you what the Miata can do. Struggle. <laughs> Why is that? It's supercharged. <laughs> but the AC on, it basically cancels it out. Oh, so. well don't run with the AC on, man. That's a good point. Hopefully it'll be cooler up there. Yeah, I think it will be. I've never done the Taylor Dragon. Which is surprising because we don't actually live that far from there. Let me tell you something about the Miata. Yes, it's supercharged. No, that does not mean that it has a decent amount of power. I still feel, I still am not any faster than the standard V6 Camry that you'll encounter on yeah. the road. Yeah. It's a, it's a ton of fun, yeah. right? It's a blast, it's a ride, it's an experience, but it's not fast. I mean, but that's, Tale of the Dragon isn't about going fast, it's about having fun. Somebody had too much key lime pie. <laughs> that's what happens when you get a triple. That's true. Well, luckily, I only got a double. <laughs> yeah, you're safe. Yeah, no, Key West is great, but like, it's very touristy. I'm excited to go back up north and like, through the mountains, you know what I mean? Seen a lot of beaches. Yeah. I'm ready to see some mountains. I'll be, uh, I'm excited for some fun roads. 
I'm a little depressed I'm gonna have to put the hard top back on. You liking it without it? It's a really fun time without the hard top. Just sell the hard top somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not before we get to Canada. Yeah. That might be a bad decision. <laughs> Well, we've made it another day without the Civic getting stolen. Last night was what I was most worried about because we stayed at the same place in Miami, um, which is a high risk for getting stolen, and also staying there for two nights in a row is, is uh, not a good idea. But the Civic is still here, so it's all smooth sailing for the rest of the trip. Um, I've been trying to figure out a good name for the Civic, and nothing really sparked an interest for me. Um, nothing really just sounded like it would be the right name. So I put up a poll on Instagram and asked what you guys think a good name for my Civic would be, and there was one that stuck out among the rest. Because Civics are stolen so often, the best name recommendation that I got for this Civic is Mia, because it's about to be M-I-A. <laughs> We're headed to a road called the Tale of the Dragon, located at the border of North Carolina and Tennessee. This is one of the most popular mountain roads to drive in the US, and it's about 1,000 miles away from us. And to be honest, it's a fairly boring drive back up through Florida. Other than seeing a few fan boats on the Everglades, there's not much to do. And I think the boredom has really started to get to Ben because he started buying me strange gifts. Ben, there's there's an object in your car. There's an object in my there's car. There's an object in your car. Okay. Uh, it seems to be a horse. A horse? <laughs> oh, it's got, it just wanted some coffee, dude. Yeah, man. Did you pay $20 for this? No. Yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> holy cow, man. <laughs> or rather, holy horse. <laughs> All right. What do you What do you think? Is this because you don't have enough horses in your car? Oh man, no, I, I should be keeping the horses. <laughs> the horse isn't the last of the gifts that Ben has given me. Heat, black ice, ice, Coronado chair. Like the next night, I found 14 spicy air fresheners in my car. So I did the only thing a reasonable person would do. I opened them all up and shoved them into Ben's small Miata for a surprise the next morning. So I'll wake up to uh, quite a strong scent, especially considering his cabin is like half the size of mine. That's official, Ben has boomed me. He got me back good. Just pull the air pressures in my car, so. <sighs> Plotting my sweet revenge. I'm gonna revoke that horse statue for sure. We've made it into Georgia. There's only 400 miles left to go until we reach the Tale of the Dragon. But before we get there, we're gonna stop in Atlanta, Georgia to host a little car meetup with our good friend, David Patterson. So we are in rush hour Atlanta traffic, so naturally things are progressing very quickly. Um, but we are almost to uh, the meet that we'll be having in an advanced parking lot in Atlanta with David Patterson. Here we are in Atlanta. Um, we've met up with David Patterson. I don't know if you can see his Mustang behind us. Uh, to have a meet here at an advanced auto parts. These days, Ben and I don't really have a lot of time to go to car meets, so this was a refreshing change of pace. About 30 or 40 people arrived with their cars, most of them probably there to see my Miata. After speaking with the store manager, Advance Auto Parts was gracious enough to let us use their parking lot for the meetup. And our friend and YouTube elder, David Patterson, was kind enough to put us up for the night. Thanks a ton, David. So uh, we just had a lovely night last night, a little car meet here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, crashed with David Patterson, that dude in blue. Just the loveliest guy, he and Alejandra are gems of humanity. Uh, and now we are setting off for Tennessee and Deals Gap, uh, the notorious, legendary Tale of the Dragon. So far the trip is going really well. Um, the car has been very reliable with the exception of that little slave cylinder issue and i think that it's going to be an enjoyable drive 
that deals gap. So now we are headed to Tale of the Dragon, which is one of the most curves per mile road in existence as far as I know. It's a destination driving location for sure for a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of motorcyclists go to Tale of the Dragon, otherwise known as Deals Gap, and uh, they just go for a cruise. So that's what we're going to go do. Uh, we're going to spend a day or two there and just drive some nice mountain roads. I am really excited to get to see some mountains because I feel like we've been driving on these straight southern roads for a little too long. So uh, it's time to get up and into the mountains. Oh man, it's gotten really cold. A little cold. Yeah. Ooh, we got goosebumps. I need to get a jacket on and some pants. Ah, dude, it's good to be back in the mountains. You know, I don't know if it's the cold weather or this mountain view that's giving me these chills. It's the cold weather. Yeah, it's probably the cold weather. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the sun is making me squint more than I usually do. Oh yeah? You see that smoke coming yeah. over there? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, probably a Civic that's gone off the road and is currently on fire. Hopefully not a premonition of what's to come. We're here at the border of North Carolina and Tennessee, and tomorrow we're gonna take our cars through 318 turns and 11 miles on the Tale of the Dragon.